I think that uh, originally it was a perception that we had, and, and I'll use uh, the phrase, the best of both worlds. It was a rhetoric that uh, was uh, uh, very popular back uh, 20 years ago, where uh, proponents of the current status would argue that we had the, the best of the United States and the best of being an independent nation. Uh, the data uh, goes in the opposite way. The evidence uh, tells us that, that that's actually not true. We actually have the worst of both worlds. Why is that? Uh, first of all, we have no representation. No representation. We have no vote for our highest uh, uh, sovereign leader, which is which would be the president. Uh, because of this, we don't have equal participation. Uh, by not having equal participation, it starts affecting uh, our system. It, it starts affecting our capacity uh, to make decisions. And what is the result? Sometimes we speak uh, in terms of the status as being. Uh, 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 sometimes we speak in terms of, of the status as uh, a, not a dignified status or uh, something uh, akin to civil rights. And although I believe that, and I think that's true, and I think that's fundamental to the question, I also think it affects us in the issues that Puerto Ricans uh, identify as the most important issues. I think we have two fundamental challenges uh, to make Puerto Rico a better place to make Puerto Rico a more prosperous uh, place. Uh, first one is identifying and eliminating the obstacles. And that, I think that the fundamental obstacle in Puerto Rico is the colonial system. And I'll talk a little bit about that. When the uh, current uh, Estado Libre Asociado or Commonwealth status was designed, I am convinced it was done with the best of intentions. I'm convinced that people designed it uh, so that we could prosper. And they, de they designed it for a world in 1952, uh, taking into account that world. Uh, I'm also convinced because of uh, letters written by uh, the then governor, Luis Muñoz Marin, that it was just a transition phase, that they only had it in mind uh, so that it could, so that the experiment of the Commonwealth uh, could produce a better economic uh, prospects for Puerto Rico, and then Puerto Rico could decide whether to go uh, to become a state or to be an independent nation. Uh, the world is changing, and if we're still stuck in a system that was designed for 1952, that we don't have the power to change, then uh, the result is that we're going to have uh, inherent inefficiencies, and that uh, as the world keeps on changing, those inefficiencies will uh, will loom larger and will have a, a broader effect uh, on the people of Puerto Rico. And the opportunity that we have now is to say no to that system, to say uh, uh, let's change what we have. And when we change it, let's eliminate this, this colonial aspect, which was already a limitation uh, back in 1952. Let's just take that. Let's make a decision, go through a route where we have the power uh, to make the decisions, uh, where we can adjust uh, as the world adjusts, where we can participate uh, in the world uh, you know, in, in equal terms. Uh, and if we can do that, I am convinced uh, that Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans can, can shine brightly, uh, not only uh, as a part of the United States, but also in terms of the whole global context. Will the United States uh, give a statehood? It's one of uh, uh, the questions of uh, that's part of the fear tactics, uh, I believe. Uh, why? For, for several reasons. First, because I am a firm believer that uh, the only way to find out is to ask if you want to become a state or not. So not asking uh, just because of the fear that you will be rejected uh, is, is going to just keep us in limbo. In the history of the United States, 37 territories have asked to become a state. And 37 times it has been given to those territories. So let me make this point very clear. 100% of the times that a territory has asked to become a state, it has become a state. So there's no evidence to support the notion that the United States would reject Puerto Rico as a state. I think the evidence is there uh, for the total opposite. I think uh, the time is right for if, uh, should the people of Puerto Rico choose to, be, to want to become a state, uh, to ask for it, to uh, you know, show how we can be 
uh, equal partners in this. Show how we can mutually benefit each other. Show how this is much more than just getting money, earning, you know, getting more uh, benefits economically, that it's about uh, benefiting our society, benefiting our humanity, benefiting uh, our children, giving them the opportunities, giving them freedoms that we don't have right now, individual freedoms. I think if we can uh, expand the conversation from, uh, you know, again, the, I think the demagogy of, uh, or, or the rhetoric of, you know, statehooders just want this for more money and, uh, you know, independence, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're going to get no money uh, and, you know, they're, uh, they're just going to go back to, to 1940s if, if we come, become an independent nation. I think both uh, views are flawed. I think what we really need to have is a discussion of each view, of each uh, alternative, uh, a smart discussion, an intelligent discussion, giving the pros and cons of each alternative. And once we do that, then uh, we can be certain that uh, our people will have the elements of judgment to make a clear decision, uh, to make an informed decision, uh, and to uh, make the evaluation of which route they take. That's why I think that in this plebiscite, the first question is so much more fundamental. Okay, show us the plebiscite. Show sure. us about it. Tell us about, talk to us about the plebiscite. So this is the... Pl Gabriel, the Gabriel Hyde. Okay. Hyde. Uh, Hyde. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Explain to us what's, going, what's the plebiscite. What's going to happen on November 6th? So in, in November 6th, uh, Puerto Ricans are given the opportunity to answer two uh, fundamental questions. First question is, do we want to stay as a territory under the territorial clause, which uh, by our definition is a colonial territory? Uh, if you want to stay under this uh, territorial clause, uh, then you would vote yes. If you want to change that, if you want a, a, a new alternative, a better alternative under our uh, under our arguments, you would vote for no. No uh, to the current status. Now there's a second question as well. Uh, there's a second question where uh, you're given three alternatives. Three alternatives that are, uh, uh, that have been validated by the United Nations, by the international system, as three uh, alternatives uh, to uh, decolonization. One is statehood, which you would become uh, an integral part of, of the United States in this case. The other is uh, um, El Soberano, or the free association, uh, a free association uh, between republics, uh, whereby you know the United States already has uh, similar arrangements with the Marshall Islands and so forth. And the third alternative would be uh, an independent republic. Uh, to my understanding, and, and it is my firm belief that the most important question in, in this ballot is the first question. The first question asks us if we want to stay the same or if we want to change. So if people choose to stay the same, it, it doesn't really matter uh, what comes out of the second question. If the, the majority of people in Puerto Rico say, yes, we want to stay under the colonial status, then if you choose uh, you know, statehood in the second question, it's, it's uh, really irrelevant. Uh, whereas only if you choose no, only if the no vote wins, then we can start looking seriously which are the alternatives that we have for, for decolonization now. It is my belief that in this, uh, in this uh, uh, plebiscite, uh, regardless of, of what happens, there is still you know, further, uh, further steps to, that, that will ensue. Uh, regardless, uh, and I think and I firmly believe if, if the no vote wins, which will give us the alternative, to send a clear message not only to the United States but to the world that we don't want to be a colonial territory and we want a, a dignified and prosperous uh, alternative uh, to start the conversation about which alternative uh, we're going to choose. And at that point, I think it's where it's important to establish uh, also in the conversation what are the pros, what are the cons, uh, what does it imply, uh, what does it mean for Puerto Rico in the short, long, uh, short mid and long term. Uh, how can we make a plan for Puerto Rico so that it can prosper uh, again in the mid and long run? Um, so I think uh, 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 it, whatever happens in the plebiscite, the key question will be that first question because it'll either 
uh, uh, enable uh, or, or expedite the process of decolonization, or it'll, it'll uh, present a, another obstacle in, uh, in that fight for equal rights and, and, and for uh, equal powers. And at that point, I think it's where it's important to establish uh, also in the conversation what are the pros, what are the cons, uh, what does it imply, uh, what does it mean for Puerto Rico in the short, long, uh, short, mid, and long term, uh, how can we make a plan for Puerto Rico so that it can prosper uh, again in the mid and long run. Um, so I think uh, uh, it, whatever happens in the plebiscite, the key question will be that first question because it'll either uh, uh, enable uh, or, or expedite the process of decolonization or it'll, it'll uh, present a, another obstacle in, uh, in that fight for equal rights and, and, and for uh, equal powers. What do you how, how did it happen that uh, the aspect of us becoming a colo uh, a colonial territory or not become an issue of being on a list or not. It's an issue about definition. Here, here's the definition. Do we get to choose our highest sovereign? The answer is no. Do we get to choose representation at the highest levels? The answer is no. Do we have lesser uh, quality of life, lesser uh, important parameters in economics, education, uh, growth, uh, inequality that in, you know, the United States? The answer is yes. So by all uh, measures of analysis, we are a colonial territory. It doesn't matter what name you give it. It doesn't matter if it's Biela, uh, Estado Libre Asociado, Commonwealth, you name it. It doesn't matter. We still don't have the power in our hands we still can't make the fundamental decisions in Puerto Rico. We still uh, have very limited roles in altering our government to be effective, to be uh, modern, to be uh, powerful, to be part of this uh, global economy. <clears throat> so I think uh, you know, we, we can have an endless discussion about why uh, the United Nations uh, you know, says one thing and then says another. And, uh, but I think that the the, the clear uh, question here uh, that, that we need to ask is, uh, is the definition of, of being a colonial territory, which is being a possession of another, of another country, uh, does it apply to Puerto Rico? And the answer is clearly yes. We need to take this conversation a step further. We need to take it not only as, uh, like I said, not only showing the obstacles, but that future that Puerto Rico uh, that great Puerto Rico that we can have. I'm convinced that if we eliminate the obstacles and that if we start designing an integrated plan of Puerto Rico from different sectors, from different uh, points of view of, of society, we can get to that Puerto Rico that's competitive uh, in the world, that has uh, equal opportunities as our brothers in the United States or our brothers in, uh, and, and sisters in other countries, that have you know, all the tools for, for our children. Why not imagine why not imagine a Puerto Rico where instead of nine out of 10 students uh, coming out without the basic tools to compete in the world, why not imagine a Puerto Rico where all the students in Puerto Rico have the tools to compete? In the same sense that this plebiscite gives us that platform. It gives us that platform because even uh, my uh, brothers and sisters that favor the Estado Libre Asociado or the Commonwealth, they know it has to change. They've talked about it. They talked about an ELA Mejorado, an enhanced commonwealth. But the fact of the matter is, it hasn't happened. And it's not, uh, I'm sure they've tried to do it, I'm sure they've uh, worked hard at it, but it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened because we're still a colonial territory. Let's take this opportunity. Let's take this platform that we have right now and demonstrate to the world that the Puerto Ricans uh, that live in Puerto Rico are tired of being under the colonial territory and that we want a better Puerto Rico and that there's more things that unite us than divide us. And if we can do that in this plebiscite, if we can demonstrate that more of us 
believe in Puerto Rico, that more of us want change, that more of us want to say no to the colonial... Se me fue la tarjeta. Ah, okay. Careful. Sí, sí, sigue, sigue, more of us. Sigue, okay. sigue. That more of us want uh, uh, to eliminate the, the colonial territory, uh, that I'm sure that if we demonstrate this, that, that there's, uh, by, by voting no in this plebiscite, that there's more things that unite us than separate us, we will set the platform by eliminating the obstacle to create a new platform for arguing or discussing or designing a better economic system from different ideas, from different sectors of society, and then choosing or building upon the best ideas and doing the same with education, doing the same with healthcare. I am convinced we can do this. I am convinced that this opportunity for decolonization and this vote not only presents the opportunity to eliminate the obstacle, but sets the basis so that all of those people, probably in this documentary, that have different views, that have different perspectives, can sit on the same table, can discuss, and then we can get to a conclusion of what's the best route for Puerto Rico.